What's up nerds back with another video in this one we're going to go over the Cuomo files which is a PowerPoint that I created with the assistance of ChatGPT to basically understand why so many people hate Chris Cuomo why so many people hate the Cuomo family and why people just hate Patrick Bet David for hiring Chris why they think that all of these crazy opinions you know and all this stuff that's going to go on they seem to think it's the end of the world PBD's ruining himself killing his brand there's no way he's ever going to financially recover from this so and i'm just over here like man i knew the, i didn't like these guys because they changed the name of the tappan z bridge i knew i didn't like this asshole when i saw him on the tv all the time because of covid and everything but i mean damn i'm, I'm out here like am i am i not supposed to be hating this guy way more than i do like damn everybody hates this guy except me so am i a pbd simp you know i've got the value tainment hat on or is this guy really literally Literally the devil and you know we need to figure out what's going on and in that case we'll test out with chat gpt is chat gpt which is supposed to be trained by google and trained by the liberals and all this stuff you'd think it would defend him so is it defending him we'll see all that and more on tonight's episode of the cuomo files but that's not what this is called so don't call it that <laughs> i mean that's what the name of this powerpoint is <laughs> so First off, a little bit of background context. PBD has Chris Cuomo on three podcasts on various times, and overall the sentiment is pretty negative. Even before all of this goes down, the overall sentiment is PBD's either letting this guy get away with softball questions, he's covering for his murderer brother, he's uh, never going to take accountability, whatever the you know sentiment is, it's all rather negative, right? But despite all this, PBD really likes having Chris on. And he does a little bit of teasing. Hey, Chris Cuomo's on my neck. It's like, okay, this guy's not on the podcast yet. They haven't said anything crazy. But, you know, uh, he's, he's working with him outside of just talking to him. You know, it is through... Patrick Beck David's Minect company that Chris Cuomo is now able to make money, which he can then spend on whatever else. So, you know, but nobody nobody exploded on that. Nobody really cared about that until PBD drops the nuke, full blown Chris Cuomo joining Valuetainment, to which Tim Pool, with 1.6 million followers on his Twitter, and who knows however much on the Daily Mail or the Daily Wire, I, I honestly can't remember which one he's on. Don't hate me on it. I know he's the Daily something. I can't remember. Um, but so he responds, huge fuck up. Chris Cuomo faked being in COVID lockdown. His brother is a murderer. No redemption arc. PBD goes CNN is very disappointing. And then, oh my God, F shit hits the fan. BBD's next podcast literally explodes. All podcasts long. No Cuomo, PBD sellout, PBD and the CNN, PBD consumer the view. Oh, unsubscribing. Everybody stop watching. Sellout. All this stuff. All fucking podcast long. And PBD even addressed the PB the Tim Pool tweet early on. But it wasn't good enough. He had to go back and address the chat later because the chat was spamming so bad. PBD had to say, I want more debate and exchange of ideas. He goes on to say later, similar to Elon and Don Lemon, if Chris Cuomo tries to be CNN on PBD, it's not going to work out. He says something along the lines of if he tries to play the CNN game while here, then it's not going to work out. Again, there is the uh, tweet. Uh, you know, everything is in the description below. All the links to the chat GPT, all the links to the podcast, all the references, everything below. Feel free to fact check everything. And to further talk about it. So PPD addresses the Tim Pool tweet. He addressed it. It was so bad the chat was spamming Cuomo poll. It was so bad. I was there. This is my live anecdote. I was there when he ran the no Cuomo poll because of all the Tim Pool brigaders not shutting the fuck up. There was about 3K votes and it was about a 58 not happy with the Cuomo decision and 42 percent happy with the Cuomo decision. Right. And then later he ran this poll on Twitter where are you happy that Chris Cuomo joined the value attainment as a talent partner? This one had 36K views, 10 times the amount of views, and it skewed the voting a bit more. It was almost exactly one third people happy that PBD has Cuomo on and two thirds unhappy. And so a little bit of bias in here just to acknowledge this YouTube chat and the YouTube voters was pretty much directly Tim Pool brigaders and the Twitter PBD podcast. That is people who are 
on Twitter, but maybe not, don't necessarily always watch the podcast. So it's interesting the numbers, what they rounded out to from these two audiences that definitely watch him, but not all the time. So it was interesting to see what the number uh, rolled out. And so after this, you see all this, it's like, oh man, I must really not like it. So I'm guessing that that means all of the Social Blade numbers should say that this is dog shit, right? Well, I've got about a week later, and between the PBD podcast channel and the Valuetainment podcast, there was no change. There was maybe gains a little bit, but not enough of a change to notice anything. So, you know, if all 3K of those people unsubscribed you know if it really was as bad as everyone said you i think that you would see some more unsubscribe numbers but i think it does say a lot that there was not a mass unsubscribing from pbd i mean we'll see maybe when the Cuomo podcast comes out, the first time Cuomo does a podcast with PBD, maybe we'll see some unsubscribers there. But it's to me, this shows that all of those people talking, they're all just talkers. They're not people of action. They're not real fans. They're not they're they're just they're just yappers. They're, they're just there because they came from Tim Pool and were spamming. They don't actually have brains. They don't actually matter, right? But Still, what what should PBD do, right? Because it's not like he's totally, totally by himself. Granted, yes, I would say 90, 95% of the podcast is on PBD. However, let's just say that all these entitled Tim Pool Brigaders, oh, you only have a subscribership because of us. People only watch you because of us. If it wasn't for us, you wouldn't be anywhere. So, you know, okay, let's give them just a little bit. Let's put them, you know, a little bit in the mindset. Luke Opinion, this is what I would do if I felt like PBD owed me something, if I was part of that group, right? And so I go into all these different things, right? And so basically, this summarizes to, well, if I really care that much, what would I say if PBD took the money that Chris Cuomo was making him from Valuetainment, he took that money and put it towards a fund to throw Andrew in jail or to hold or more money to Andrew's sexual victims or something? Or maybe the first time you have Chris on, you get Tim Pool, surprise him with Tim Pool on the podcast and have a little, uh, little, uh, you know, surprise gotcha moment hit piece podcast. I mean, hopefully both of those things sound so ridiculous that I don't need to really say much else because, man, it is definitely a valid argument to some minute percentage like yes pbd wouldn't be where he is if he didn't have people commenting or people liking to push him into the algorithm however let's not sit here and pretend like pbd hasn't started up 40 however many gajillion not 40 gajillion but like you know he's got three or four multi-million dollar companies that he started with the assistant of his va assistance of his various other people but it was he started in part the majority of these companies so pretending like he wouldn't have gone anywhere on youtube if it wasn't for these people i mean he would have i really do think that no matter what pbd sets his mind to it's it's tough for him to not succeed so this opinion of oh he owes us as the viewers i mean pbd would do this if nobody watched him i believe i really do believe that if nobody watched him he would still be doing this shit so now moving on that's a little opinion section so now, why do people hate the Cuomo's so much? ChatGPT responds. So this is a whole information dump where I go into ChatGPT and we do a bunch of breakdowns where we take a very high level breakdown, which you'll see on this slide, and then we start taking the chunks of those breakdowns and going more and more in depth because I'm using ChatGPT4, the pro version currently out, and the advantage to that is you can build off, it, it used to be a lot worse before paid and, bef and chat gpt3 and stuff trying to ask it to go back to work on what it has done 
But now with this pro, the more in depth you go, the more specific you can get you can get and you can get it to give you super specific references and everything that was trained on. So that was the whole setup of ChatGPT. Essentially, we're starting nice and wide in the beginning, getting generic information, trying to filter it all out, and then we go step by step to get down to where we get to the point where we have direct references and direct information for all of this stuff. And I'm kind of going to go blow by this stuff. Again, everything is in the description below. I will have sections where we do a stop, break, and review everything. So just sit back and enjoy. I know this is going to be a pretty dense section with a lot of information. So... I'm not going to read all of this. The important part is the bottom two. This is what I typed into chat to get it started down the Cuomo road. And the important things to point out is that I ask it for everything good, bad, controversies, any things that they had that affects the state. I give it an amount of points to work with, just like, hey, just give me five points just to go with it. And I also get it thinking in a more human way, quote unquote, because again, this is not like a computer that you could just say, oh, type, search up everything about the Cuomo's in your database. That's not how ChatGPT works. You have to trick it into searching through its own files. So you need to hit it with a little, oh, don't forget to check this, use this word here, use this word here, use this word. And then that basically ChatGPT is gonna go down and it's gonna go, oh, I can't forget to go through this part of my information. It gets to this stuff, oh, can't go what to go through this part. So again, parsing through all the ChatGPT data. So what that looks like is it looks like nice big lists, big generic. We got Matilda Cuomo, Chris Cuomo, boom, five big things that they've got. Then we've got Andrew Cuomo, Mario Cuomo, five big things that they've got. And then this bottom picture that you'll see from ChatGPT. I say, OK, that's all great. Now let's go in and let's take each of these bullet points that all that I ask chat to and give me three more pieces of information and then a concluding statement about that information. And so, boom, we get here we go. Mario Cuomo's fiscal management, Mario Cuomo's investment in public infrastructure and Mario Cuomo's social welfare programs. Boom. Boom. Three more points and an overall impact about how it affected New York. And I did the same thing. Mario Cuomo did the same thing for Andrew Cuomo, did the same thing for Chris Cuomo. And did I do one? Let me just double check. I do not believe. Yes. So I didn't do one for Matilda Cuomo, the wife, because honestly, she was pretty good. <laughs> I mean, she uh she was a big doer what she said and i think at the end of the day her inspiration to the family was one of walking the walk talking the talk and a lot of the stuff that i talk about in this powerpoint with her is just a lot of positive stuff she really was about all of the social programs that mario and her uh, talked about and funded in new york state she spent her money on those things as well but we'll talk more about her so the main talking points, however, I said we do a, you know, big step back because you could read all of that, pause, go back and read, right? For me, these were the main takeaways for me. So both or all three, really, Mario, Andrew and Chris all blended social and political policies and politics, right? So specifically, obviously, Andrew and Mario were the governors. They got to blend specifically like political policies, right? However, Chris, a lot of the things that he did and a lot of the criticisms that he received were he blended. He was more of an activist than a journalist. Right. And another topic, the second one impacted not just New York, but the whole country because of the importance of New York, New York City, the New York brand, the impact of all of that. All of these people, the Cuomo's, whether or not they liked it, impacted the rest of the country. And that's what leads into the point three. They were leaders for better or for worse. They made decisions and stuck with them, which something that you can't really say for a lot of people. I mean, again, better or for worse. I am someone who hates change, however, understands that if there's nothing 
at, there's there can't be just addition on all the time. There needs to be change. Someone has to bite the bullet. Someone has to make the decision. And OK, the results may not have played out how everyone liked. However, you got to have the balls to fucking do something. And that's it's. To me, that matters a lot. And the, finally, it's a delete, deeply political family. Andrew Cuomo married into the Kennedys. Bobby Kennedy was a, a brother-in-law to Chris. Uh, you know, so and the Cuomos, regardless of you know how invested in it they were, the mob connections that follow them around. You know, there's a lot of power in this in this family name so that's kind of the overall kind of broad view right now after we did that generic broad view of all the policies and everything like that then i asked chat to go in and give me some more scandals and some more history for everybody so the Cuomo's family history is marked by their significant contributions to New York politics, as well as controversies and personal anecdotes that have layered to their public personas. So Mario Cuomo, essentially the Italian socialist mob guy to kind of sum it all up again. Pause, read at your leisure. Andrew Cuomo, mostly sexual allegations and the covid pandemic are the big things that chat brought up. They've got this third son dynamics, which is, you know, it's the corruption in their lives. You know, the power that comes with that family, the corruption that comes with that power, criticism on that point. And then I asked it to go specifically into Chris Cuomo. Here's the list of people that Chris Cuomo has interviewed. And while he may be an activist, I do respect how many different people he was willing to have on. Granted, you know, some of these people, you know, uh, Democratic in Bernie Sanders, independent, Democratic. I mean, that should just say socialist. Andrew Yang, Democratic, independent, you know, Democratic, socialist, you know, independent, social. Like, you know, some of these uh, Bloomberg as an independent Democrat. You know, I don't know about some of the, you know, uh, categorizing by chat, but good that it had that. And then here's some of the scandals from Chris Cuomo and Andrew Cuomo. Uh, so it's activism, blurring the lines, COVID special treatment, and never needing to respond to criticism. Then this is specifically Andrew Cuomo. So uh, the previous page had some Andrew Cuomo stuff, but that's Chris Cuomo, right? This is specifically Andrew Cuomo. And I specifically dialed in on the COVID pandemic and the sexual assault and legislation or, you know, uh, not legislation, but uh, different suing stuff, you know, different uh legal actions there we go i was thinking legislation different legal actions taken against cuomo or andrew cuomo because again tying back to a little bit earlier where it's like okay you know what what do i want pvd to do to donate to like you know the lawyers so that's what i kind of went with this is i was like okay if pvd was going to put something towards andrew cuomo whatever what would he do that was kind of one of the ideas behind this section I tried asking chat about Mario Cuomo's fiscal policy. I wanted it to get more specific data, but it didn't have any data. Uh, you can see that here. And then Matilda Cuomo, just like I said earlier, there wasn't as many scandals with her. It was really just a lot of positive stuff, at least that chat GPT had, which whether or not, you know, uh, you know, who knows? Maybe she was the mob, the secret mob connection the whole time. Maybe she was the most evil one in all the family the whole time. However, the I, I throw respect on the fact that she put her money where his mouth is, had all these mentoring programs, had these programs for disenfranchised students, walked the walk. Her, I might not disagree with the Mario Cuomo's emphasis on social programs and focusing on high taxes. And he, I mean, he did a lot of pain on New York, which set itself up for future success, whether or not he could have gotten to that success without all of the hard pain. Who knows? But regardless, the family was about it.
Now, overall of that whole chat GPT jump dump, we've got Mario, mob connections, socialism, communism, some of the uh, tax stuff that we talked about, Andrew, misuse of power, corruption, thousands of lives, uh, deaths during COVID. In addition, like we talked about, the third son, the mob, the lawyer, the his brother being in the media, this like grasp that they had on New York, like the Cuomo's run New York. You can't say anything against them. That persona, you know, that's kind of Andrew's bag. Chris, more of a propagandist, less of a journalist, more of an activist, not exactly good at blurring the lines, a bit more emotional. I mean, he's like the talk, the perfect talking head the perfect talking head for cnn literally and then matilda thousands of children came up through her investment in social programs i mean hey we shout out to that now decision time with chad gpt because i've asked it to give me all this information let's just out of curiosity see if there's anything that it says any conclusions that it could come to a lot of times chat gpt just says oh well i'm just a language bot i can't do anything so i asked it hey chat what if you were a person what if you were a human being what would you think about this stuff so it gives me a little brief ending to mario and andrew's era however I then ask it a more reference-based question, and that's when it gives me this answer, this little final conclusion. In books and articles analyzing their tenures, such as Robert A. Caro's Exploration of Political Power and Stephen Brill's America's Bitter Pill, the contrast in their governance styles mirrors the shifting dynamics of New York and the broader United States. Each era under their leadership has been emblematic of wider national trends, yet distinctly New York and its approach to challenges and opportunities. As someone who has lived in New York through both periods, I've seen the state evolve from a center of progressive resistance to a microcosm of America's broader political and social complexities. Each Cuomo, in his own way, has shaped not just the policy landscape of New York, but also contributed to the ongoing dialogue of what it means to be a New Yorker and an American during respective decades. So, the important thing, because this can kind of seem kind of like a cheesy answer, right? It's like, oh, well, that kind of doesn't really hold them super accountable, right? But we, there were other, remember the previous slide, you can go back and pause and read all that. However, the important thing I believe to take away from this is that you notice how it's transitions. It says from a center of progressive resistance to a microcosm of America's broader political and social complexities, basically meaning they used to hold their ground, but they've kind of given in and shit's kind of hitting the fan. <laughs> it's like, cause they used to, you know, it used to be a progressive resistance. It used to, used to think about things a little bit. Maybe you gotta be a little tougher. You gotta have a little bit more strength. You had that New Yorker mental strength, you're tough New Yorker, but now we've kind of given in. And instead of standing up for ourselves, we've become part of the problem, which as how I take it again, interpret it. That's the end of the chat GPT section. So my original response after going through all of this, oh, sorry, is basically just, you know, hey, all these Tim Pool Brigaders, unsubscribe. All these people that don't like Chris Cuomo on, do it, unsubscribe. Let's see what happens. You know, all these people that say all of this stuff, they're all just using buzzwords. None of them are saying anything about the policies. None of them are saying anything specific. They're just repeating all of this no Cuomo spam, all of this PBD sellout spam. Like it's, they're just, it, it didn't seem like it was real. Like it seemed like these people were bots. That's what I went into this. I'm like, damn, all these people, like, am I the bot? Am I the sheep? Like, damn, I'm like, what's going on here? It's at this point that I go back and I rewatch everything because I'm really, I'm stuck in my head. I'm like, am I a sheep? What is going on here? So I go back, rewatch the podcasts, listen to the discussions, listen to some of the new discussions that Tucker Carlson, Chris Cuomo had, some of the other podcasts and pushback that Chris has gotten just to see what the deal's going on. So I find out that back in July, Cuomo and PBD talked about election fraud. They had a back and forth that went viral with Candace Owens and Chris Cuomo, but this wasn't actually the first time that they had talked about it. And what was interesting to me is that Cuomo 
pulled back the curtain in a pretty insane way. So Cuomo said that there is an imbalance of enfranchisement as you go down the socioeconomic scale. It's not a good political argument. The better political argument is for you to just show your ID when you vote. I mean, isn't that that is so who who would say anything to that? It is a no brain. You would have to not have a brain to hold that argument. And then right after that, he says, which is why the Democrats do it. And PBD calls him right out. He said, yeah, but the only thing that that's going to do is make it seem like we're racist when that's not the that's not the play. And it's just like, I mean, Cuomo just and they just drop it and they just don't talk about it. And then fast forward, you know, eight months later, they have this whole thing where PBD says again to him, like, there's no way that you are doing this. You're trolling. There's no way that you're fucking having that position because Chris himself even said that you would not have to have a brain. And the only reason that that would be done is so that you could call the other side racists like i mean this and he's just and he's just dropping it they're just like yeah yeah just that and that's how the game works i think that that is incredibly valuable having someone that just exposes it like that and and is just and lays it down on both sides and says how it's gonna go and then fast forward that's ex and he and he doubles and triples down further down the line eight months later so it is, I, th I think it's situations like this that are important. Now, another situation, Chris Cuomo and Tucker Carlson sit down. Something important to look at is Tucker Carlson, and two hours, the whole video, no ads whatsoever, versus Chris Cuomo breaks it up into two videos and has ads in between everything, ads on everything, spaces it out by multiple days and has introduction sections so that he can get ahead of Tucker on the points that Tucker's making and say, now I know it's going to look like I'm wrong because Tucker said this and I know it's going to look like I'm the bad guy here, but listen to me explain how everybody else is wrong and I'm actually right and this is whatever. I mean, it's a... It pisses me off so much because this is exactly the kind of bullshit that I would pull having arguments with people or discussions with people is I'd try and get ahead of them and be like, oh, well, I know you're going to say all this and this, 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 this. It's like, OK, granted, maybe a little bit of what I was going to do was go there. However, now is it my job to debunk your point before I even say my point so that you can make uh, un you know, a balanced decision on it? It is a very manipulative way of, uh, you know, talking about things and displaying information. And then on top of that, he has it lined with ads in between everything. So that's just something that definitely you should take notice of. And now about that actual podcast, right? Because now, because that was just first, you know, setting it up because I'm not going to sit here and pretend like Cuomo is not using people a little bit. And you could tell, like, if he's not using people, why doesn't he just drop it all like Tucker? You know, no, he can't drop it like Tucker. He needs the money. And if he doesn't need the money, actually need the money, he still thinks that way about it, which is important. Now, more important during the actual conversation, I think it's really important to note that Tucker called out Chris multiple times, stood his ground multiple times, did not let Chris get away with just, you know, the softball questions like on PBD. And so when ChatGPT says, you know, one of the biggest things with Chris is that he never faced accountability. I see these podcasts. I rewatch these podcasts and I see people giving ex that's, they are doing nothing but talk back to him but calling him out pbd called him out before and then when he when cuomo tried to do it again in the live podcast with candace pbd and candace quote called him out on top of pbd saying multiple times that if he tries to pull this shit i'm not gonna let him but people still say like oh pbd sell out pbd how could you do this it's like man shit after going through all this 
I like to think that PBD might possibly have a brain attached to his head. Just maybe. Just maybe. Now, that's pretty much it. Time for you to decide. You know, here's all the different BS stuff, you know. What's with my biases? Did I break any unwritten rules that you, oh, his brother's a murderer. No matter what murderer, murder's murder, you can't cross that line. Is it like Tim Pool where there's no redemption arc? There's zero. You just can't, not whatsoever, you know? Like, it doesn't matter if part of what, motivated Chris was his job or Andrew's job. It doesn't matter that he's God now. It doesn't matter that they've, you know, had these steps. It doesn't matter he's had these conversations with people and he's been forced to acknowledge stuff. It doesn't matter any of that, you know, nothing matter. you know, or is it, do you have biases that are the reason why you hold that opinion? Whatever it is, it's time for you to decide. I think I've presented as much information as I possibly can in this video. I'm tired of fucking talking. So, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Smoke grass. Eat ass. Be excellent to each other. I'll see you in the next video. This is.